Is there anything you want to say to the fan base? Just just appreciate the fan base, man. You know. Oh. <laughs> All good. We ain't live. Went to Charleston Southern. Yep. Boston College. Mm-hmm. Mississippi State. Yep. So you've been a little bit of a journey, man. Left home, Louisiana. Um, what was like? What was the process through all the all that like? Um, it wasn't the smoothest. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, coming out of high school, I was a COVID kid, so yeah. I didn't really get the looks and offers that you know I felt like I was supposed to. Um, so you know, I, I ended up going to Charleston Southern without even like seeing the campus or like meeting any coaches in person. So that was that was interesting, but I made the I made the most of it. You know, yeah, you did. I was there two years. Um, worked my tail off, and then you know went up to the ACC. Yeah, dude. The other uh, so in the game in South Haven, you know, I, I went to y'all's game against Utah. I saw another a player for Utah transferred in from Boston College last year. Mm-hmm. Y'all were teammates last year, right? What what's that like? Like having a teammate? You transferred to Mississippi State. You play Utah from a guy that transferred from Boston College. What was mm-hmm. what was that like? Um, it was it was different. Because as a competitor, you know, I, I didn't really want nothing to do with him at the time. But, like, I, I walked on the court and warm and seen, seen him smile at yeah. me. I couldn't help but smile because, you know, that's like my brother. Yeah, So, you no know, doubt. I gave him a hug, you know, tell him I love him. Yeah, dude, him. That, that's cool. That's not something I ever really experienced a, a, a little bit. Now, we didn't have transfer portal, but you had transfers. And same thing. My roommate at Mississippi State transferred to Southeast Louisiana, Noah Hughes, uh, and he pitched against us, and I faced him. He got me out. But I remember walking up to the plate. I could, like He was just kind of grinning at me. I couldn't help it. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, it. I got right. to gotta win the at-bat. But, right. uh, dude, you, you talk about the competitive side of things, dude. I want to talk to you about about a minute left in the game against Utah. You run over to the midcourt, look at this, the fans – who showed up, by the way, the, the, the fans around Memphis area, South Haven, Hernando, like all those, the Mississippi State fan base up there really did show up. Yeah. About a minute left, y'all, I'm not going to say ice the game. It was a great game. But about a minute left, I think Cam had just hit four straight free throws to yeah. kind of ice it a little bit. Right. You ran over to the midcourt, looked into the stands, and kind of like started hyping everybody up. That fired me up, man. <laughs> Like, I kind of, like, started losing a little bit right there. Yeah. And, uh, like, what – from the first f- four games of the year I've seen, dude, you, you're a competitor. Like, mm-hmm. you, you play hard on both sides of the ball, and I know that's what Coach Jans likes. Like, he – if there's anything I've noticed under Chris, Coach Jans, it's, it's – that guy demands defense. Like, yeah. you're going to play hard on defense, and it, right. it looks like you fit his mold perfect. What – what brought you to kind of go mid court and hype hype the fans of South Haven up? Uh, it wasn't really a thought, you know. When I'm on the court, it's really just my emotions and and the passion coming out. Like I, I, see I, it, I just man. feel like on the court, I'm a, I'm a different person. Yeah, and I feel like yeah, a yeah. lot of people around me could vouch for that. It's like I just I just some in me just turns on and. It's just emotions. Yeah, dude, from early on in the season, what I've noticed is you're always talking to teammates mid-game. You're always – it seems like you're trying to get a game plan together, help teammates out. They're helping you. Absolutely love what I'm seeing, man. It's It's been really cool to watch. And uh, seeing your competitive nature, seeing you hyping the crowd up in a big moment, that, that was a big win against Utah. Like right. that, that's, that's – those are the type wins in a neutral site – that help you get to March Madness, yeah. and um, dude, what what? How, how's it been for you guys? Like, it's you're four games in. Like, how's the how's the season starting? Like, on, uh-huh. on your terms, you know, our, our spirit is is very high right now, but we also know like it's it's just the beginning. Got a lot a lot of trials and tribulations ahead. You know, got can't get too high, can't get too low, and we just try to take it one game at a time. Yeah, dude, I, uh, I know it's tough to not look ahead on games and stuff like that. Like, you got a big home game against Pitt coming up. The mm-hmm. next game in the humps against Pitt. It's going to be a really big one. Uh, but before that, you got to go to Dallas. You got to right. go to SMU. Uh, man, first true road game. You've had one neutral site game, but the first true game, true road game at SMU. What, what's what's the expectations? What's the preparation leading into that? Um, no, the expectation is to win. It's, it's always to win, but, you know, um, our staff does a great job getting us prepared for every single game, you know, from personnel to plays to 
to game plans. It's like they give us they give us the answers, and it's just our job to go out there and put it to the test. So they give y'all all y'all need about what the team's coming up, like yeah. the, the scouting reports and stuff. That's they dive deep into that for sure. For oh, sure, man, that's, I met with Coach Dom a little bit, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Love what he was – the strength coach for basketball. I love what he was teaching you guys, man. I was trying to learn from him, Yeah. trying to learn some things I can do to get better. You'd be, you'd be shocked, man. Like, y'all are all vertical jump. You know, like, mm -hmm. basketball is extremely athletic. Right. Baseball gets the rap that we're not that athletic, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody can go out there and play <laughs> baseball. But, like, we're starting to test, like, a lot of vertical jump stuff. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to learn what basketball players were doing for vertical jump. Yeah, I mean, he, he has us go through a lot of jumping exercises. <clears throat> you know, I mean, some of the guys, our knees be hurting and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it because he really knows what he's talking about. He does his research and everything's, like, catered to everyone's personal. Yeah, y'all play two games a week, 40-minute games, uh, two 20-minute halves. H how is that on the body? Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with basketball. I, I know I can watch basketball, but I'm not familiar with what y'all go through. Mm -hmm. What's the two games a week? Uh, I know they're all draining, but what's the two games a week recovery like, the body? Like, how, how do y'all handle that, and what's, what, how does that feel? Um, you know, during the season, it's, it's hard to, you know, be playing at 100%. Yeah. You always have to be in the training room, taking care of your body, eating right getting the right amount of sleep, you know, those things are key, uh, especially because the way we practice, um, we try to practice harder than the games will be. So when we get in the games, it's, Slow, it's easier. Slows down a little bit. Slows down a little bit, right? Yeah, and yeah. Um, so, you know, we always just try to get our minds right for one day at a time, one day at a time. Yeah, I, I, talked, to, uh, I talked to Hub a couple weeks ago about that. And, uh, man, he's a special player. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch him, fun to watch him play. But, you know, he was talking a little bit about y'all's training and all that stuff, man. Like now that season started, I kind of talked to him before it got rolling a little bit. But now that season's rolling, how does practice change? Like uh, I, I know y'all's preseason's brutal, what y'all go through. But mm -hmm. now that y'all are in season, it, it's got to be you, you got to slow up on practice a little bit. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, a little bit. But um, you know, we still focus on trying to get us better at the end of the day. Because you know, uh, Coach Jans, he always preaches, like, even though we're in season, we have to continue to get better and better and better mm -hmm. going into March. Yeah. And the, those postseason games um, can't stay stagnant. But it's it's more, you know, pulling on the mental uh, side because, you know, the scouting and you have to remember a, a lot of different things in order to, you know, bring it to the game. Yeah, another thing I've noticed this year is y'all don't really have a set starting five. Mm -hmm. It seems like you guys have a collective team – that at some point's all gonna have to help y'all win some ball games. Yeah. Um, what's that do for y'all's confidence? Um, I, I guess team morale, like chemistry. Like you, you got to have a lot of chemistry to rely on different guys any given mm -hmm. night. Um, but how, what's that do for you guys as, as a team? Uh, I think that makes us special. You know, yeah. it, it forces people to get into a team mindset. You know, you can't really have an ego on this team. Um, you know, we got. Great transfers in, good freshmen in, uh, great returners coming back. And everybody works hard day in and day out. And Coach Jan believes in winning. So he's going to put the five out there yeah. for whatever team or game plan he has in mind. Doesn't necessarily mean this guy is better than that guy or that by, that guy, vice versa. Just mean, you know, we're just trying to win. Yeah, dude, I saw a crazy stat after y'all's Utah win. I think Coach Jans is like 17-1. and one in the month of November mm -hmm. it is tenure at Mississippi state. That is as a baseball player. Look, I don't, I don't know what basketball goes through, but as a baseball player, those non-conference games in college are this, it, they will sneak up on you. Man. <laughs> right. Like we would play South Alabama, Southeast Louisiana, ULM, uh, you just long list of teams. They'd come in and beat you. Like if yeah. you weren't ready to go and yeah. what, what he's done, getting <clears throat> somehow getting you guys ready every single game for no matter what, it, it speaks volumes of what y'all are, you know, kind of instilling around the team yeah. and the program. Yeah. But you talk about the transfers that came in. What is the reason you came to Mississippi State? Uh, you, you, we talked about Charleston Southern, Boston College. What brought you to Mississippi State? Um, for me personally, you know, my goal is to play in the NBA, play professionally. Um, you know, make a living off this basketball thing. 
And I feel like me coming here, playing under Chris Jans, you know, his his winning mentality, mm-hmm. especially on the defense end. You know, my my career, I've always been a scorer, uh, always been able to score the ball. It's been my natural talent, but I never really could figure out, you know, how to be an elite two way player on both sides of the ball. And I feel like that's what I'm turning into. And for me to reach my goals after college, I have to be elite on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you can't have holes at the next mm-hmm. level. Um, right. I, I'm I'm trying to make a living off baseball right now, yeah. and uh, man, I'm you know I'm six years out of college now, and I'm I'm still to this day trying to get better on different aspects of the game. That's awesome to hear you you're trying to do that, man. It it's been really easy to, to support Coach Jans's teams over the years, mm-hmm. just because man, no matter what, you can guarantee that on the defensive side of the ball, they're getting after it. Yeah. Like y'all are getting after it, and it, it's to me that's the easiest team to support is someone that's playing hard the entire game. Mm-hmm. And um, but talk about some of the other transfers, uh, y- y'all. I know y'all have a good freshman class. You got returners that are good, um, but the fan base isn't really. We're all still trying to get to know all the new guys, yeah. you know. Um, so talk to us about the first year guys that just came in and some of the freshmen. No, uh, me. We got Riley Kugel. Transfer from Florida. He had a big um, game against Utah. Yeah, he real did. big game. Um, got Michael Nwoko from Miami. Physical. Yeah, Nwoko was a physical dude, man. Yeah, Kanye Clary from Penn State. He's quick. Yeah, we got R.J. Melendez from Georgia. Yeah, yeah, and then the freshman, uh, Del Quan Warren, yeah. and uh, E.J. Payman. Yeah. All right, and on the returning side, Cam Matthews, Hub, like, like. Dude, Murphy, like, let's talk about Murphy for a second. In the Utah game at South Haven, Murphy put up 18 points, 13 rebounds. That, he had a really big night, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, and that, to me, it was awesome to see because I don't, like, when y'all go into SMU next game, I, I, you don't know who's going to be the guy that helps win the ball game. Right. You don't really have a set starting five. It seems mm-hmm. to be rotating every game. Like, yeah. it's awesome, dude. Right. And, uh, like, I know we talk about the new guys, and there's a different pieces. There's different pieces to this team that makes it so exciting. But how are you guys building that team chemistry? You say the the chemistry is great. You guys are relying on each other. But mm-hmm. I asked Hub this question: How how are you guys building that uh, trust around the team? Um, I think it's through the hard times we go to go through together. Um, I feel like, for well, for me personally. I get closer to these guys to seeing how hard they work day in and day out and see like um, the things, like the hard times in practice we have to stick through with each other, like the, the days where it get dark in there sometimes. Like we on that line and we, we may be running for half the practice, but like we, we don't give up on each other, you know, and, and then off the court, we're just always around each other, man. Like always going to get something to eat. We're always communicating with each other. It's like, it's like a, Big brotherhood, really. Yeah. What do y'all? Or what do you do away from basketball? How do you? How do you get away from the game and decompress a little bit? Um, me really, I sleep. I love. I love to sleep. But uh, I'm around. I'm around my teammates a lot. Honestly, like I'm around the guys a lot. I mean, what's some stuff y'all do together? We. I know we went bowling. We go. We go out to eat a lot. I feel like every other day it's a. Where are we going out to eat? That's that's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. It's y'all are gonna have to have it, man. With how many guys y'all are playing, how many guys y'all are rotating in and out. It's uh, that's great to hear. Yeah. That's great to hear. But what's uh, what's the message of the fans? Uh, y'all are four and zero. Plenty of ball left. Got some big games coming up. What's your message to the Mississippi State fan base? Well, you know, just appreciate the support. Um, you know, keep packing the hump. And you know, next time we play at the hump, expect to be live. We got Pitt. December 4th. December 4th at the hump. We got Pitt. I'm sorry, Coach Jans, for looking ahead to that. We're not looking ahead to that. But December 4th, we got Pitt at the hump. We got to show up, be loud. That's going to be a big game. Yes, sir. Uh, but in the meantime, y'all got SMU on the road. Yeah. That's going to be a big one. Y'all got a couple neutral site games coming up in Mississippi. Right. Uh, they just had a great crowd against Utah and South Haven. Big win. Uh, and I actually got a question for you about that. Uh, but – Coming up, they got a game at Tupelo, uh, so the you know, Northeast Mississippi crowd can go, come out to that. And then Central Mississippi, we got a game, Jackson, Mississippi against Central Michigan. Yep. 
we need need the Jackson, Mississippi area to show up and be loud for them. But yes, sir. to go back to that Utah game, y'all came out slow in the first half. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seemed like Utah was making shots. Uh, y'all were playing hard, as always, but um, – some shots we fired up weren't really falling. Yeah. Some good looking shots, but yeah. they just weren't falling. And I know that's going to happen, but I want to know what was Coach Jans' message at halftime? Um, you know, at halftime, we go over the film. We we see what things we can correct and what adjustments we need to make because, you know, sometimes the game plan doesn't always go according to plan. You know, teams come out with new plays, new sets, new looks. You know, at halftime, we spend a lot of time on you know, adjusting for the second half. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he was just being motivational. You know, he knew it was a dog fight. He knew we had to get out there and, you know, stick to our principles, stick stick to the main thing, you know, defense, rebounding, playing hard. He knew the shots were going to fall. We have a lot of talented players, a lot of talented playmakers, and, you know, it just all came together. Yeah, man, y'all came out in that second half. Whatever y'all talked about, it was it was – Really, a great job because y'all came out quick. I think y'all went on an eight to two run in the second half, something like that. Um, but it was quick, man. Like yeah. that turnaround was quick. Not saying y'all played terrible in the first half, but mm-hmm. like, Utah was on, man. Yeah. Like y'all easily could have lost that game, but y'all came out in the second half, played. Looked like y'all even played harder on defense. I don't. Yeah. And that's not even really possible for you guys, yeah. but. Shots started falling. I'm uh, banked one in from three. The <laughs> <laughs> bank was open. Yeah. But uh, I tell you, a big play of that game was the alley oop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kugel threw up to RJ. RJ. Yeah, RJ. Uh, man, when you when that type of play happens in the second half of a basketball game after a first, slow first half, when that play happened, the place kind of went crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like what what does that type of play like do for y'all? Um, our confidence is through the roof. Um, I know we just want to get back and play defense even harder. Um, my my emotions come out a lot on the court. I'm very passionate, so I know for me, I have to like keep that internal for the time being, so I can get back on defense. And because it was a close game, every possession mattered. Every one mattered. Yeah, every single one. So yeah. And then later on in the game, which was one of I, the guys I went to the game with, that was one of their favorite parts was Cam mm-hmm. going five of six from the free throw line. Um, kind of, I'm not going to say ice the game, that alone ice the game. There was a bunch of different things that I like kind of ice the game. But mm-hmm. what was like for Cam to get up there and to make five out of six of the last six free throws, like, like that – place went nuts man and that's whenever you kind of went over the midcourt and fired everybody up like yeah. like, how, like for cam to sink those free throws like how was that what was, was that moment like it was a, it was amazing man because it's seeing his hard work just pay off like that you know um because he's not known as a shooter or you know a consistent free throw maker mm-hmm. and so in big times like that he's stepping up as a as a fifth year guy leader and you know just Testament to his hard work, and he, you know, had his all fired up. Dude, Cam's been—he's—he's he's a lot of people's favorite player just for the way he plays defense, how hard he plays, how yeah. physical he is. Right. Like, dude, it ain't—it ain't easy to score on yeah. on you guys, but right. to score on Cam, it—it it, it ain't easy. Yeah. And um, man, it, I loved seeing that, mm-hmm. seeing him drain that, and then the game before he drained a three. Yeah. <laughs> And it was kind of perfect. Like, yeah. it went right in, like nothing but net, yeah. right up from the top of the key, man. It was that was awesome. But, yeah. uh, dude, it's it's been freaking awesome watching you guys so far. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are. Um, this, w- w- what's what's y'all's goals for this year? Uh, outside of just winning, 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 like, like what's, some, what's some goals y'all have yeah. set? You know, uh, our goals are pretty big. You know, we, we're trying to win 25-plus games. Mm-hmm. Um, Trying to, of course, not just make it to March Madness, but we want to win games in March Madness. You know, we want to make it to the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the Final. Like, our goals are very, like, national championship big, and that's how we work, and that's what our mindset is. Um, preseason, y'all weren't ranked. Mm-hmm. Does that do anything for you? Uh, I talked to Hub about that, but does that do anything for your motivation for the team? Um, Yeah, yeah. For me, personally, it puts a chip on my shoulder. I, um, you know, my teammates and I know Coach James have put a big chip on their shoulder as well. Um, you know, me personally, I feel like I've always been an underdog. So 
I never have had a problem with it. It's just always just added fuel to the fire. Yeah, man, you talk about being an underdog. Um, that's kind of always Mississippi State's kind of vibe, you know yeah. I mean? Like, for whatever reason, um, y'all go to back-to-back -back March Madnesses at, here at Mississippi State, yeah. and y'all come into this season with a, a team I was fired up about coming yeah. in with this recruiting class. Yeah. To be unranked, it's like, all right, well, let's see what we can do about that. Right. And y'all are handling y'all's business, man, starting 4-0. Yeah. I, I really do think that Utah win is – when we look back, that's going to be a big win. It's going to um, be because it's a good team. It's a good team. Yeah. Um, Utah was like top ten in the country in points off assists. And what Utah did, man, was they passed the ball around. Like it, it was just pass, 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 <laughs> shot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's cool to see the different styles of play in basketball. Like next, next week you might have two big men underneath the rim. Yeah. They have to take care of. Uh, the next week, you might have five shooters. I, it, yeah. it changes. Right. And um, what does that do for y'all's preparation? Um, going I, and I know the coaching staff does a great job of scouting reports, but you feel like y'all have a team that can handle no matter what style of play y'all are going against that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, after after every game, we watch the film on the game and we scratch it. We scratch it and this it. It's a completely fresh and new game plan because, like you said, every team brings us new challenges and personnel yeah. and things like that. And what makes us so special is, like you said earlier, like we don't have a definite starting five. Our team is so deep. It's like whatever team we play, we can match up with them and, and put whoever out there and, and not skip a beat. So that, that's a special thing. Man, you, you talk about kind of where you came from earlier. Um, your mom beat cancer mm -hmm. twice. Yeah. Can you tell us about that, man? That must have been tough for you and for her and the family. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a tough time. I was I was younger, um, so you know, I didn't I didn't really understand it at first. Yeah. Especially the first time. Yeah. Um, I think the second time I was a little bit older and kind of dwelled on me like, okay, she could. It's a possibility she could be gone. You know, um, but. Me and my dad, my family, we were by her side the whole time. And, you know, it just kind of put in me that things aren't as always as bad as it could be, you know. Seeing her go through that struggle and then, you know, in my own little bubble, going through my own struggles, is like, okay, I can get through it. If she get through that, I get through anything. That's all that. That's really cool. You looked at it like that, man. Uh, I can't imagine. Uh, my mom's been a rock in my life, my whole yeah. whole life. Thankful to have her. Uh, but man, that that's that's awesome. She beat it yeah. twice. Right. A freaking warrior, dude. Yeah. yeah. That ain't that. Uh, can't imagine that. But you talk about your dad fighting with you guys. Uh, he played ball at Southeast. Yeah, Southeast we, Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how was his influence on you growing up? Uh, coming from that. Yeah, I think I think my love from basketball definitely stem, stemmed from him. Um, you know, just growing up, watching him play in those thirty five and older leagues. <clears throat> Me being a little kid trying to trying to hop into games with the with the big dogs, thinking I could really do something. But you know, I used to be the kid that used to be on the side of the court, dribbling the ball, making mistake, dribble off my foot, going to court, got to stop the whole game. Um, but yeah, I've been put a basketball in my hands since. The day I could walk, and it just it just never left. So this has been your love since day one. Yeah, yeah. You I, like baseball, you said. I was better at baseball. Better at baseball, yeah, I was but loved baseball. basketball. Yeah. Ah man. All right. What 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 made you uh what made you like baseball? What got you into baseball? Um, I played every sport growing up. Every sport. I played every sport growing up: football, baseball, basketball, I ran track. Um, but. I feel like baseball just kind of stuck because I was best at it. Football, uh, I quit football like in eighth grade. I got my tooth knocked out. Um, you were good, and you were good on that. Yeah, after after that, I was done. Yeah. But uh, baseball stuck because I was I was really good at it. What position um, were you in baseball? When I was before high school, I played a lot of shortstop center field. Got to high school. Varsity freshman year, they stuck me out there in right field, left field, mm -hmm. depending on the game. Um, but yeah, that was so out, outfield, older, outfield shortstop. Yeah, as I got older, it was more like center field, shortstop, 
More of that athletic position. I pitched when I was growing up. I've always been an outfielder. And then now I'm I'm center field mainly, and I play a little bit of left and right, kind yeah. of, you know, trying to learn the corners. I've been a center fielder my whole life, but yeah. just trying to be able to play all three. Right. Just trying to be versatile. Yeah. You know, wherever they need me, I'll help. Yeah. But uh, – and uh, what was basketball like growing up for you? Uh, you were around the game a lot. Your dad mm -hmm. played um, – I know you fell in love with it, but what what was that journey like through younger days, through middle school, high school? Mm, I would say it it was fun, um, but I would say mentally, for me, I was I just always felt like I was being looked over. You know, yeah. I was I was a late bloomer. I didn't get my first offer until like my senior year of high school. So I really, when it came to basketball, I put all my eggs in one basket because yeah. the game. You like bet, I, I love the game. You bet on yourself. Yeah. Didn't have any offers going into your senior year of high school, but you stuck with it. You said, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I know COVID threw you a curveball. Like that changed things for sure. It changed yeah. things for everybody. I lost a full season of baseball. Yeah. My first full season, 2020, completely scrapped. Yeah. So my first full season was my second year in 2021. Crazy, man. But yeah. um, what message do you have to little kids out there that want – Mm -hmm. to be a basketball player one day. What's what's your message to them on on their journey as they're beginning their journeys? Yeah. Um I would say to have as much fun with it as possible. Um cuz you know when when you get to college it's, it's a business. Uh when you get to the pros it's a business and uh we forget the times where we could just have fun and you know and not and not worry about the the rankings and the the politics and the who's this and who's that. You know just just take your time, work hard. Day by day, focus on you and your craft and, and have fun with it. That's awesome, man. That's a message I can use for baseball, too. Yeah. Pro ball is a business. I love what I do. Wouldn't want to do anything else, but there are days that you got to remember, like, man, I'm playing a kid's game. Yeah. Like, I used to do this in the backyard, <laughs> you know, with, with my buddies, hitting right. a tennis ball with a stick. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. just – and that perspective is always good to get centered around. But, yeah. um, man, that's that's really cool to hear. Uh, you got any brothers or sisters? Uh, yeah. I have a, one big brother. Nice. Yeah. Hey, did he play basketball at all? Uh, he played a little football. Played football. He, football guy? Yeah. He's a little yeah. older than me, though. That's He's nice, man. Guy. So family's a big deal for you. Yeah. yeah. That's a big thing at Mississippi State, family. It yeah. seems like everyone I talk to is always talking about family, family, family. Yeah. And uh, that's awesome you found your home here, man. I'm yes, happy sir. you like it. Yeah. Um, but before we go, um, anything you want to say to the fan base as we are four games into y'all season and y'all got a lot of big games coming up? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we appreciate the support. I, I appreciate the support. Um, you know, going in game by game, we're, we're expecting to win every game. And y'all are like our six man. So, you know, the way I am hyping up the crowd and, and doing my little antics, that's, that's because I feel like y'all are part of the team too. And we appre really appreciate the support and, you know, keep packing the hump. He said it. Let's let's get out there and support them. Y'all yes, got a – we got a fun basketball team this year. Can't wait to watch y'all do what y'all do. Yeah. Good luck on the road against SMU. Yeah. Uh, big game. Y'all go take care of that. And yes, then we sir. got some uh, – we got Pitt at home, Central Michigan and Jackson, McNeese State, I believe. Yeah, in Tupelo. In Tupelo. Yeah. So we got we got some big games coming up yes, before sir. conference play gets cranked up in January. Right. But man, good luck to y'all. We're supporting y'all, and y'all y'all go make us proud. Yes, sir. Absolutely, Claudio Harris, everybody. Yes.